Happy New Year. <laughs> a surreal but increasingly common encounter in the capital's <laughs> largest <laughs> pub. Join us <laughs> in our sport. You should join them. Ah, okay. Big guys. Yeah. Have a nice day. The Real Housewives of Kiev meet the real and growing territorial army, one of many small platoons on one of their regular exercises. There's Mariana, a 52-year-old marketing strategist, now practicing military tactics and getting to grips with her brand new sniper rifle. Sergei runs a small medical supply firm. Alexander has a start-up PR business. And rallying the troops is Anton, a journalist. All recent volunteers out of their middle-class civilian comfort zone to take up arms against Russia should the need arise. You're training because you really think that the Russians might invade. I want training because I want safety in my family. Yeah. What's your message to Russia? What's your message to President Putin? Don't do it. it. Don't do it's it. It's not good for them. We prefer to be prepared for this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because uh, the situation in uh, 2014 showed us that we must be prepared. What's your message to Vladimir Putin? I wouldn't advise him to come here, to right. our land. As they wander off through the forest back to civilian life, they may not look like a lethal force, but they do know what they'd be fighting for. Ukrainians are motivated. We have like a polls are showing, independent polls, showing 30% ready to join resistance in the case of aggression. So if the Russians were to invade, they would face a guerrilla war inside yeah. Ukraine? Yeah, they would face uh, uh, what we call attrition warfare and all the other kinds of asymmetric responses. Because obviously they have uh, mathematically stronger capabilities than us, mm -hmm. particularly in the air and in the Navy side. Uh, but uh, at the same time, as soon as they advance in the territory, it would be extremely difficult, if possible, for them to hold any of this. Meet Andrei Zagorodniuk, Oxford graduate and former defense minister, who is still instrumental in organizing Ukraine's military response. When you look at this map here, Ukraine, yes. Russia, Belarus, Moldova, Crimea yes. occupied by Russia. Yes. It doesn't look good for you, does it? Well, obviously it looks threatening and uh, obviously we have a whole areas of risk, uh, particularly from this side, yeah. from Crimea, from the Black Sea, from the Sea of Azov, uh, now aren't from you? Belarus. In a way, yeah, we still have this western part, but generally, yes, we have a quite a substantial uh, borders with the, in fact, enemy or yeah. with Belarus, who depends on enemy 100%. So, and and yeah. does that make you feel very vulnerable? Well, it feels threat, uh, threatened, and obviously we need to react on that. Uh, with, with, there's nothing new. We live with this for like eight years now. Which is how long these Ukrainian trenches have existed. This was filmed this week. The front line of a bloody but forgotten war started after Russian-backed militia occupied a chunk of eastern Ukraine. But do you also understand Russia's security concerns when they say that on their border they don't want you know, NATO forces around. It would be easier to understand if they wouldn't be invading us. They bring up uh, quite substantial uh, threats and demands. And uh, if somebody is feeling like some of those demands could be satisfied, uh, we would see some concessions which only would reinforce Russian behavior. And that would make invasion much more likely. And this is where Kiev's Soviet-era metro system comes in. One of the wow. deepest in no. Europe, one of the safest, even in the very unlikely event of a nuclear attack, and now, once again, part of defense planning. So the idea is that once you get the people down to the metro station, to the platform area, which is about 70 meters below the surface, you would then shut these doors here, these giant metal doors. They would close, and then you could seal off the station from the upstairs. It would become a, a safe shelter. The last time they planned for this was during the Cold War against America. Now it is during a new Cold War against neighboring Russia. What an irony. Well, earlier I spoke to the mayor of uh, Kiev, Vitaly Klitschko, who, before he became uh, a mayor and indeed a rising politician, was, of course, a world heavyweight boxing champion. And I spoke to him in his office, in the mayor's office in Kiev, and I asked him 
how he felt, because, of course, Ukraine, although it wants to become a member of NATO, is not about to be invited by NATO, nor indeed by the European Union. So does Ukraine feel a little bit like the forgotten stepsister? Yes, of course, it's a very difficult geopolitical question. Yes, of course, we see the discussion between um, United States and Russia without Ukraine. That we, upsets you? We're very upset with that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we see the discussion uh, regarding NATO and discussion regarding future of our country. Without it's, you being at the it's, table? It's, it's, yeah, it's uh, very unfair to talking about Ukraine, about the future uh, of our country without Ukraine. These talks have been going on a week in Geneva, now in Brussels. What are you afraid of? We see the result uh, just a couple of days ago. They finished uh, in Geneva discussion between the United States and Russia, uh, future of Ukraine. And after the discussion, the military back, the uh, Russian military forces coming back to the, to, to the board of Ukraine. Uh, Russian still play with the muscles. Like boxers? In boxing, we have a clear rules, and uh, we see right now, and the Russians doesn't care about the rules. Your father was a very senior decorated officer in the Soviet forces, in the Soviet Air Force. What would he be saying now if he was still alive about his son, you, mayor of Kiev, Ukrainian patriot? He was a patriot of our country and also have exactly the same vision as me. And uh, as uh, clear men have a chance to see another country and understand how uh, effective, effectively work the propaganda in the Soviet Union. Media is the main weapons in Russian Federation. Not the tanks. Not the, the uh, bullets. Mm. The main uh, weapons is media, and that why it's uh, we understand also without propaganda what happens in the east of Ukraine. This conflict will be never happens. Mm. And if it did get worse, if there was a Russian invasion, what would you do personally? As former soldier, I am ready to do defend my country, to defend independence of in the territorial integrity of Ukraine. You would fight? Yes, of course. On the front line? Yes. And do you think that you know, the Germans, the Brits, the Americans, NATO would do enough to defend your country? Uh, we need uh, modern weapons. We need political support. We need uh, unity with European countries and but uh, be because I told about that we see our future as a democratic country. Final one about your own future, will you run for president? Right now I don't want to give you a clear answer for that, it's a huge task. If I can implement my goals in two years we're coming back to your question. Thank you very much Mayor Klitschko.